Uh, welcome to another edition of DXB Today. It's great to have your company this evening. I hope you've had a cracking day. And thanks so much indeed for tuning in to your essential guide to what's going on in the vibrant city that is Dubai. Today, we're focusing on all things mental health. Why? Uh, because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. We're looking at the relationship between exercise and mental health. Exercise comes in a number of different forms. Uh, does it always benefit your mental health and how? Uh, lots to look forward to. Now this is what is coming up. Khaled went down to Dubai's first fitness and recovery hotel, Syro One Zibil, to find out how they're integrating well-being with their biohacking pillars of fitness. Yes, and we've also got talented singer Alina Liwo right here in the studio performing tonight. A spectacular performance that I'm sure we're all very excited for. Very much so. Uh, Good, I'm glad to hear you, that. You'll be singing along as well, won't Probably, you? Probably, yes. As is your one, that's for sure. Now I'm looking forward to the show. We've got some great guests uh, lined up. Uh, they are in the green room. Uh, have we got a green room? Sort of green room. Yeah, they're out yeah. there at the back at the moment. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, why are we talking about mental health? Well, because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Big focus on mental health. Uh, and we know, and it's good that people are talking about mental health. For a long, long time, it was a bit of a taboo subject. You know, a lot of people, especially uh, for men uh, out there. Uh, but good to see that in recent times, uh, and certainly after COVID as well, people have been uh, embraced in mental health a lot more. And it's a lot more, there are a lot more platforms, a lot more services, a lot more professionals addressing it at the moment, as we'll find out throughout the show. That's true. I mean, it, the conversations are a lot more open nowadays, which is really good. Considering we're in such a fast paced city, I think it's very important for the people here because we tend to forget about our own well-being. Definitely. And I'm really interested, actually, to see how men's mental health is going to be incorporated into the conversation, because I do think it is something that men don't find it quite as easy to talk about their feelings, their emotions, what they're going through as us ladies, you know, we like to talk, so everyone knows how we're feeling. So I think this is going to be a great conversation. Oh, and certain. Tom, maybe you can open up. Me? Share, share with us. Share with us a little <laughs> bit. Amongst friends. Amongst friends. Yes. Okay. This is a safe space. Just us. This is very much a safe <laughs> space. Uh, but uh, no, but you're quite right, and it definitely has been. You know, there's all those tags that go along with it, aren't they? You know, machismo and tiff, stuff, uh, st uh, stiff upper lip and tough it out, mm. etc. Uh, but I think the sort of pandemic of loneliness during COVID and the element of working from home, the element of learning from home, opened the eyes to so many That's around right. the world. And hence why there is just a more openness now when it comes to talking about one's emotions, one's problems as well. And we've all got problems, haven't we? Some more than others. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, to have a professional intake on yeah. this subject, we have got a co-host joining us. So let's find out who will be jumping on the sofa with us this evening. <laughs> Hi, my name is Adil and I'm a men's coach, personal trainer, host. And today I'm very excited to be your co-host. Well, Adil will be joining us right here in just a little bit. But first, Khalid went down to Syrah One Zabil, Dubai's first fully integrated fitness and recovery hotel, to check out their performance boosting facilities. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, get ready to discover the ultimate destination for fitness and recovery. I'm at Syro One Zabil, the ultimate destination for fitness, health and recovery. And the best part it is, you can stay the night. Well, I'm here with Desmond, who is the hotel manager, and he's gonna tell us everything that we need to know, not just about a hotel, but also about fitness and lifestyle. Well, Desmond, it's a pleasure having you with us today. So tell us about your journey. Yes, very exciting to be here with you. Uh, Syro is part of Kersner International, a legacy making brand in the hospitality space, as you know, and always innovation is at its DNA. And that is evident now with the launch of Syro, the first fitness and recovery hotel here in Dubai. Now, I got a quick tour around and I seen that it's not just your regular, let's say, gym in a hotel where traditionally you might see a, a back room that people kept and put some weights in there, but you have a beautiful gym here. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, it's certainly more than a hotel. It's a groundbreaking concept, uh, a unique 360 approach to fitness and recovery. We have 
2,000 square meters dedicated to fitness and recovery here, an immersive lifestyle destination. The brand is built around actually five biohacking pillars, fitness, recovery, nutrition, sleep, and mindfulness. Well, I think that's what we all probably need when we go on a vacation or even just unwinding from a business trip. So when it comes to staying at the property, uh, I've seen that there is uh, specialized rooms as well. Yes, we have many dedicated specialized rooms. We've got uh, dedicated group exercise classes, but if you're referring to the recovery treatments, uh, we, we have 10 uh, dedicated treatment rooms. And then of course, our hotel rooms are very special indeed. Uh, very different from traditional hotel rooms. Everything is functional, has a purpose to optimize your overall well-being, to get a restorative night's sleep. Sleep being one of our brand pillars, which is uh, critical in terms of your productivity and to mitigate jet lag and fatigue. Well, it sounds fabulous, especially uh, when a guest stays here overnight with you know experiencing all the facilities has to offer. But what can they take away from it? Good question. Our mission is to help our guests to unlock and maintain their physical and mental potential. So essentially, uh, the takeaway is our, our aspiration is for to inspire and unite everyone to be the best version of themselves. Well, it sounds very fascinating. Well, thank you so much, Desmond. Uh, I can't wait to stay here myself tonight and uh, check out more of the facility. But thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, I had a fabulous time here at Cyro Wanzabil where everything is about fitness. It's not just a hotel, they're focusing on the latest technology when it comes to fitness and well-being. So come on out, work out, and stay here as well. Keller down there at the brand new uh, Cyro in, of course, uh, one and only Wanzabil. So amazing property is it not fantastic and that facility is amazing as well yeah no uh, get yourself down there if you haven't already right it's mental health awareness month and we are focusing on all things mental health today our co-host is a founder dedicated to promoting unity and a social cohesion by helping like-minded men embrace healthier lifestyles and achieve greater success please welcome uh, Adel Hussein from Brotherhood UAE to the show brother thanks so much indeed for joining us thank you for having me on First rule of brotherhood is that we talk about brotherhood, don't we? That's what this it's one, all about. This one we do talk about. We talk about this yes. one, that's for sure. Um, talk to me about why you set it up. Why, why set up Brotherhood UAE? Originally I set it up because I needed it. You needed it? Yeah. I, um, I started actually back in London. It was just something called Not Just a Man in the beginning. And it was when I came out of a pretty dark space where I realised that I'd suppressed so much of myself and my emotions growing up. Um, typical... Uh, quite a alpha male father that I had would, you know, not really want me to express so much of my feelings. It was more just get on with it. Yeah. I think you mentioned earlier about kind of, you know, just toughen up and, and you know, I heard the word the word man up quite frequently. Yeah. Um, but then after a certain amount of time, it, it really um, got to a place where if I didn't start speaking about what I was going through, it was really going to um, affect me quite detrimentally. Mm. Um, and I sought out a men's coach. I found a men's coach and he had an online men's circle. And I joined this men's circle, which was a bunch of guys just talking about their emotions. And it was really scary to do it. Yeah, I can imagine so that fear factor as well. I mean, you've now moved on and become men's coach to others, helping so many others as yes. well. How much is does fear play a part? You know, how many people are still bottling it up and aren't willing to take the step that you did to sort of man up and go, you know what, I want to talk about this? I mean, there's a lot of guys, let's, let's be honest. The group now has expanded to about 160, almost 200 men. Um, but it, was, it took three years of me doing this. Wow. And in the beginning when I joined it, or when I started this, no, no one would come. I had it on meetup.com and one person might come and join me for a tea, but it took a very long time for me to build this mm. because it is still taboo. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where men really don't feel comfortable speaking to each other. Yeah. But I'm proud to say that the men that come now, I mean, we had 40 men show up at the beach the other day. Amazing. Just really being open and able and willing to talk about what they're going through. Mm. And it isn't all doom and gloom. Yeah. You know, we talk about our triumphs and I really want men to also express what's going great in your life. It's too. a network at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell us a little bit how you incorporate fitness into the Brotherhood UAE? Yeah, 100%. I mean, one, we have a weekly boot camp which is completely free. The men can just join one of our trainers on Kite Beach where they go for a run, they do a workout and everything, then they go and hang out afterwards and just, and just you know, talk and everything like that as well. We've also got collaborations with various gyms across the UAE uh, who are giving us free classes where men can come along and join, um, you know, as maybe a precursor to joining the gym. 
Um, but also we do challenges. We've got a massive WhatsApp group and we're always sh uh, sharing challenges that we can do with each other. The latest one we're doing is 100 push-ups a day and everyone's putting in their time. But the reason why the fitness aspect is so important is because for most guys, I think it's, it's the beginning of a journey towards understanding themselves mm. and feeling better about who they are. It was my beginning. When I, when I was 19, um, I was quite chubby. Uh, I didn't look like this at all. And um, I, uh, there was someone that I, you know, I liked and it ended up she telling me that I, uh, I wasn't someone that she found attractive. And it was someone else that she did find attractive who had biceps and abs and I didn't have any of these things. And it triggered me so much where I literally joined the gym the next day. Wow. But that became literally the beginning of my full transformation in, into my personal health and fitness, to the point where I then became a personal trainer. And, uh, and then started the journey into being more introspective about how I felt about myself. Mm. Okay. So I think for most men, it's, it's fitness is the, is, the, is the beginning, you know? Yeah, so you were saying fitness is the beginning, but obviously it's not just a superficial aspect of fitness, right? How do you integrate fitness to the different themes that you have in your conversations? Well, sometimes just being able to be in the gym, on the gym floor together and talking about these kind of things together while you're training, because often, Working through the body is a, is a way where men can just not have to think too much about what they're saying, but they can just connect with their body, you know? So knowing that they are able to feel better, think more, think more freely, and not worry about um, what other people are thinking about me, but actually feeling better in their clothes, as an example. Body dysmorphia is a huge thing that men feel, and they don't like you know, mostly uh, how they feel about their midriff and, and, their, and their love handles. My love handles are, can be extra lovely at times if I don't take care of them. And, but we, we do really, you know, it's, it's a problem. We look in the mirror, we're not always happy with what we see. So I think it's one of the things where men don't like talking about it, but a lot of men are worried about how they look mm. um, because it's, 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 this is our shop window. You know? Listen, um, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. I'm always a little bit cautious of, of, of celebrating uh, one month for one cause as we should be addressing this year long round, but let's take nothing away from it. Big focus on mental health. One question we're going to ask all of our experts today as you join us as guest co-host, uh, is this link between physical exercise, which comes in so many different forms, you know, people get their physical exercise, whichever which they, uh, pleases them, and mental health. Yeah. Is there a clear... 100%. Uh, 100%. So I think it's, it's linked to, for example, self-esteem. Self-esteem is something which we believe, where we believe in ourselves, we have confidence um, in, in who we are and what we do and how we move through life. Now, imagine you're someone that says, I'm gonna go to the gym tomorrow, but you don't. Already you've told yourself a lie. You can't even rely on the word that you say to yourself. So if you are someone that does decide to go to the gym and you go one day, two day, even if it's just something small, you're starting to develop a truth within yourself and you start to believe in yourself again. That's the beginning of changing that mindset to, oh, I, I, I'm useless, I'm worthless, I'm, I'm not good enough, to actually, I am good enough. I'm making a change, I'm making a difference. And now, if you give it some time, I'm seeing a difference in, in my body, which means I can now see the way out of maybe a dark period of your life. So I think they go hand in hand. And it's a very easy, quick win to get into something about like fitness or just movement. You mentioned breath work. There's so many ways in which we can you know, get into um, movement. It doesn't have to be the gym. The gym can be a very scary place, mm. you know, for most people. I mean, especially when you go yeah. somewhere and it's full of like huge birds. It can be people. intimidating, can't it? Yeah, it can yeah. be intimidating. It was yeah. intimidating for me. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Adel, for giving us some insight into Brotherhood UAE. You're going to be staying with us throughout the episode, but now we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be finding out how one trainer used his mind to overcome his disability. Plus, we're going to be diving into mindfulness meditation with a yoga instructor right here in the studio. So, don't go anywhere. <laughs> 